Hi, I'm Alex, and this is Tank Tested. Today, we'll be looking at this paludarium. So after the break, let's dive in. This 75-gallon paludarium was created by my friend Nick. You can see more of his work on his website, which I've included in the description below. And stick around to the end of this video for a special update that means a lot to me. Now, here's Nick to give you a full tour of this incredible paludarium. Hi, my name is Nick Kinzer. This is my paludarium that has been running for about 18 months. A paludarium is an aquarium that has terrestrial plants as well as aquatic plants and aquatic life. One thing I really like about paludariums is once you get them going, they're really easy. You, you don't have to put in as much maintenance as you would for a really intricate aquascape. They pretty much are self-sustaining. Currently, there are three main species of fauna in the tank. I have Baroris maculatus. I wanted some shrimp that would contrast with the dark lava rock, so I went with these yellow, orangey Neocaridina shrimp. Lastly, my favorite animal in the tank is the Chinese fire belly newt. I have two in the tank. I believe they're both male. The newts try to eat the shrimp and the fish. They're not very successful. I would say one in a thousand attempts might result in a tasty shrimp dinner. So I give them pellets and sinking wafers and the same thing I feed the fish. For this paludarium, I really wanted to use black lava rock. I had been sitting on a pile of black lava rock that I bought years ago. A lot of the black lava I've seen has reddish tones in it, and this had kind of a bluish cast to it, and I really wanted to use that. And if you look closely, you'll notice the lava in the foreground is much darker black than the one in the back. But it really worked because when you're looking at an object up close, it's always going to look darker than it will off in the distance. So it gave a sense of depth using the darker lava in the front and the lighter lava in the back. So the very bottom of the tank has a piece of egg crate spread all the way across to distribute the weight of the rocks and the structure that the rocks are actually sitting on, which is just cheap, inert red bricks from the hardware store, which I use because, well, aquascaping rocks are expensive. So I needed to really build this thing up from the ground up to get it the height I wanted. So I used red brick and then built the rocks on top of that. The substrate is pool filter sand. It's not, I guess, the most natural thing. I mean, normally if you find big rocks, you're gonna find little rocks in the substrate that are the same color. But I like the contrast and I thought it looked cool, so I don't really care if it's 100% natural because I'm just looking for something that's pretty in my living room. The terrestrial plants are growing in a mix of soils developed by the Atlantic Botanical Garden and is primarily a mix of charcoal, milled sphagnum moss, fir bark, and peat. The main thing I'm looking for is something that doesn't grow too fast. I don't want to be in this thing trimming every single week. I wanted something that was going to be not too much maintenance. A couple of great plants for any paludarium, and especially people just starting out with paludarium, are Talansia species, which are your air plants, and some of the 
micro or small ferns. I, I really like the, uh, the mini Boston fern and the rabbit's foot fern. I also like Selaginellia or coral moss in the midground on the left side of the tank. It spreads well, it's easy to care for, it's pretty much unkillable. My goal for this paludarium was to have plants that transitioned from the land side down into the water. I, I didn't like other paludariums I saw where you had your aquatic plants and you had your terrestrial plants and there was this clear division between the both. So I used a lot of plants that did well in and out of the water. Um, in my transition between the two, I used Hemianthus calitricoides, several species of Anubias, and I used uh, weeping moss. When I first set up the paludarium, the main aquatic plant I wanted to use was Crypt lucens. I then added some Anubias nana petite, some Anubias minima, and Eleocaris uh, sicularis mini, which is the small dwarf hair grass. There's a small sword called Echonodorus rinii, but because this tank doesn't have very bright light and no CO2 injection and I don't fertilize a whole lot, it stays pretty small and compact. I didn't want to have any equipment visible in the tank. So the tank is drilled in the back and there's bulkheads, uh, one inch bulkheads. I plumbed it into a Eheim 2217 canister filter. The filter pulls water from one side of the tank um, through the skimmer uh, down into the canister where it runs through all my media and then is pumped back in on the left side of the tank and it's kind of just a trickle that comes out through the main structure in between the rocks. The lights on this tank I built myself. I'm using cool white, warm white, blue and green diodes. I got the output I wanted, the colors I wanted, and the ability to adjust the output to anywhere I want. So that's Nick's 75 gallon paludarium. At the start of this video, I said stick around for an update at the end. Well, here I am, and I have two things I wanna talk with you about. The first is Rachel O'Leary. She is an aquarist and a YouTuber that makes incredible content for our community. She talks mainly about nano fish, plants, and aquarium maintenance in general. Well, in the last few months, she's had a rough go of things. Both her and her family have had a string of terrible luck. Uh, and I think it's now time for the aquarium community to support her because she's been giving us so much of her time and free content for years. So if you can spare a few dollars, I suggest going to the link that I put down below to donate a little bit of money to her cause. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, uh, I'll link a video right here uh, that is Rachel explaining everything that's happened to her. Uh, the second is if you were inspired by this video, uh, I have links to a lot of the products that were used to make this tank in the description below. Uh, they're all Amazon affiliate links, which means that I get a portion of the proceeds. It helps pay for my cameras, my sound equipment, traveling to see other people's aquariums. It's, it's really valuable. So with that, I will see you next time and uh, I hope you have a great week.